Hey guys, what's going on? So I have a very special treat for you. Very special treat for me also. I am gonna show you guys the friction drive system from Alizetti. It's called the 300C. It's an all-in-one conversion kit that operates with a friction drive motor. And if you're not familiar with the fi friction drive motor, uh, it is a motor system. It's not a mid-drive or a hub drive. It's actually an external motor that either the motor itself or a small roller rubs up against the tire in order to push the tire. Um, I guess manually, if you want to call it that, <laughs> mechanically. Um, but yeah, there's been a few iterations of friction drives, but this one is kind of like the, uh, the full feature version of a friction drive conversion. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so first things first, this is all built upon my personal bike, which is a Versa Speed 40. Uh, this is a fun bike that I use for just kind of fitness around the area and also for conversions uh, such as this. Not the best um, platform for a conversion, but it certainly works in this case and I'm really happy about that. One thing in particular about this bike that is really good for the Alizetti system uh, is that it has a fairly common wheel size. This is a 700C or a 28, um, and so it works in that realm. Also, it has provisions for mounting a rack, both up here on the seat stays, as well as down here uh, towards the dropout area. Without these, without this one in particular, you're not gonna be able to mount this system. You could get a little collar uh, adapter so that you could attach this here if by chance your bike doesn't have uh, some brazons already built into the frame right there. Um, but aside from that, it also has a smooth tire. So this bike is stock, by the way. I put a couple of reflective stickers, but other than that, it's stock. Um, it has a good tire for that, a nice smooth uh, road tire for it. If you wanted to get some knobby mountain bike tires, it really wouldn't work with a friction drive system all that well. Uh, also, aside from that, another good thing about this particular bike that makes it good for the Alizetti system is the brakes. Uh, so I'm rocking a set of Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. Uh, we got a 160 up front. Is that right? 160 up front, 140 in the back. The hydraulic disc brakes are, a, they're great. I love them on this bike without a conversion system. They're a little bit overkill for what I need, but when you have a system like this that is external that's powering the bike, you would want some extra stopping power in case you need to overcome what the motor is going to put out. Uh, so that's what makes this bike in particular a good fit for the Alizetti system if you're checking out bikes. But anyways, we're here for the electric system, uh, so let's go ahead and jump into that. Pretty much everything is up here. You have a little bit of nuts and bolts over there. Um, I think I'll actually start with the display now that I think about it, but most of your system is up, is right here. This is the hard part for mounting. I kind of talked about this part here for mounting the bracket for the rack. Uh, this is definitely a requirement. You're not going to get very far if you try to strap this thing on. It's not going to be the best system for you. Uh, but this is where it all is. The motor is right here, the rub or the roller is here, and also the battery pack uh, sits inside of this spot, all built into this uh, little system here. So if you can mount this, you are 99% of the way there. However, the controls up front is where a lot of the magic is. I'll go ahead and start there because it's a really good spot to kind of show you all the features that are packed into the display as well as just the system in general because it is a friction drive system and a lot of friction drive systems are going for price point exclusively. That's kind of their, their um, compelling uh, feature is that they're not terribly expensive. You can mount them on a lot of different bikes uh, and that's kind of the direction that they go. So you see friction drive systems that are pretty darn inexpensive. This one is full feature. I, I'll definitely call it that. I want to call it like the Cadillac of friction drives if there is such a thing, <laughs> but it's got a ton of features. This conversion kit has a lot more features than your average electric bike does anyway. Uh, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, so let's go ahead and start up here with the display and kind of show you how they all work. The display itself is pretty simple. It has uh, five LEDs for your power level. You can tell I've actually ridden this bike. Let's see, you can tell I've actually ridden this bike quite a bit uh, because uh, the power level on here is already worn down a little bit. I've probably ridden the bike about, oh, maybe it's say 10 miles or so, and it's already worn down a little bit. I've been riding a lot of it on full blast, but uh, that's your power level here. He's got two yellow, two green that aren't lit, uh, and the red. Um, the power right here on the top right indicates that you're turned on, the little M. These also indicate um, the little buttons. So this uh, display itself has kind of like this platform on it, and you actually rock the display one way or the other in order to initiate the buttons. So pressing the, but pressing the display itself on the top left will increase your pedal assist, 
pressing the display itself on the bottom left, uh, bottom left and top left, that will get your pedal assist up or down. So this is actually using a pedal assist system, which is already a little bit rare for the friction drive systems. And how it accomplishes that is very, very simple, but at the same time, it's not entirely, um, what's the word, saturating. And what I mean by that is that there is a small magnet. I can kind of go to the other side and show you that. There is a small magnet that attaches right onto the core of the pedal. So if for some reason you have like some fancy carbon fiber pedal, uh, which I doubt, <laughs> but if you do, you'll have to get something with a metal core so it attaches there, it's a magnet. Anyways, that magnet crosses over this point right here on what is normally seen as a speed sensor. And I guess it is a speed sensor, but it's also acting as your pedal assist actuator, if you want to call it that. So when you pass by this, of course we're going backwards and the system's not turned on, um, but when you're going past this, it will engage pedal assist based on that. There is no disc mounted in the bottom bracket. It's not, of course, counting anything here in your hub because it doesn't have anything attached there. This is the only point of information that it's getting for pedal assist. As a result, you kind of got to get a lot of force or you got to be in the correct gear in order to get the crank to pass by the speed sensor. So if you're looking for a friction drive system that you want to mount on a single speed bike, then you're going to be putting a lot of force into the pedals in order to pass by this rotation counter enough. And you got to pass by it. It's not going to start anywhere on the other parts of the degree. You have to pass by it at least once. Uh, but in my experience, you kind of got to be in the right gear in order to get less tension onto the crank so that you can give this enough information to get going. And once it does get going, uh, it's fun. And we'll kind of get to that. But that's the speed sensor system for pedal assist. So let's go ahead and crank it up a little bit. It goes to level five, but also it goes to level zero. So level zero is a minimal amount of pedal assist that is intended to replicate what a system would do without the drag of the motor. Now the motor itself actually does disconnect. Um, and I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, so the motor right now is pressing up against the tire right here, not exactly aligned. Um, and that's my fault in mounting, but the motor itself is encompassed up in this area here and there is a little arm that extends down to push the roller up against the tread of the tire. So I'm going to go ahead and reach up with my other hand and press on the button to go from zero into neutral on the display. When it does that on your end from your perspective you'll see the roller kind of switch out of position. So let's go ahead and do that. All right let's see if I got long enough arms. Okay, perfect. Uh, you might have been able to hear that as well, the little uh, roller motor engaging. Um, I suppose maybe that's operating on the same drive motor that just kind of reverses itself a little bit. I don't know, but either way, um, the roller itself uh, separates from the wheel. And in this case, there's obviously no drag whatsoever because the wheel is completely free to move on its own. And at this point, you're just pedaling around a bike with an extra 14 pounds of, or so of weight, including the rack and the battery and everything else like that in here. Um, so yeah, uh, that's how you get the system on and off as far as getting on and off the wheel, which is kind of cool. Uh, some systems require a manual engagement. Some of them are electronic. In this case, it is electronic. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty neat. You can kind of see where there's a little bit of wear after I've been riding this for a little bit of time. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you some more features on the display. So as soon as you take it from letter N as in Nancy for neutral, um, that's when the motor is up. If you press and hold the negative button, it'll actually show you the letter F. And perhaps that's in French for and something in Quebec, but that is for regen mode. So what that will do is, in this case, we're actually in neutral. So let's go ahead and put it into zero. The motor will descend onto the tire and we'll go ahead and press the number one or two, something like that. When you press and hold the negative button, that'll put you into regen mode. Uh, so in regen mode, it'll actually reproduce energy based on the friction or the tension, yeah, based on the friction that it's getting from the motor. You know, it's a whole technical side of things that's a little bit beyond my pay grade, um, but it does actually slow you down quite a bit. I can tell you that from experience. As for how much it's actually generating, that would take a little bit of equipment that I don't have in order to measure the amount of watts that are going back into the battery. 
Um, I really actually like the fact that the regen mode is something that you have to press and hold. Now, if you climb up a very steep hill and then have to descend down a very steep hill, you know, on a regular basis, then that would be a drag. However, it's pretty neat that you can do it on the fly. You can be pedaling around and when you see a small hill and you want to capture a little bit of that energy back, you can press and hold the button to kind of capture a tiny bit. And that's pretty neat. You know, I think that it's kind of the right way to look at it because regen is it's literally and figuratively a drag <laughs> you know it's one of those things that sounds really awesome if you put regen on the whole time then you are definitely whoop, you are definitely riding a fitness bike because it makes pedaling very very hard and so in this case when you encounter a small hill you press it up there on the you have to press and hold that makes sense to me i actually like that feature about it um, so other parts about the display that are kind of neat is that when you press and hold the power button, it'll actually do a small little chime. Uh, so let's turn it off right now. We'll turn it on in a sec. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the power, but I'm actually going to hold the camera back over by the battery because by the battery is actually a pretty cool thing. These are speakers. So I'll go ahead and press and hold the power button and you'll hear the little chime as it turns on. It's kind of cute. It's almost, it reminds me of like the old Macintosh computers when they turn on and they have that little chime or so. Um, but this is actually ind indicative of the speaker system in here. Uh, so the speaker system in this thing actually operates not only that cute little chime, but also a horn. If you press the display down, like the whole thing down, it'll use that horn, which is fairly loud, as you can tell, in comparison to the startup noise. Uh, kind of neat. Um, other features to talk about on the display is actually the lights. So the display itself, maybe you can see it in this kind of lighting. I'll try to cast a shadow. Um, but the display itself has a fairly bright light, which was kind of neat. It's built in there. It has a steady light, but it also pulses. Um, and that's something that's constant. You can turn it off, press and hold the light button, and then it will change a little bit. Oh, maybe it's a different one. I thought you press and hold the light button. Maybe I got to hold it a little bit longer, five seconds or so. Yep, there we go. And that turns the light off for the front. Of course, it also does the horn. So if you want to turn the light off to sneak away from somewhere, horn's going to give you away. All right, so one last feature on the display that I wanted to show you is actually lock mode. So we'll press and hold the M button, and that will put up the letter L, and then the system will shut off. Now, when the bike is in lock mode, um, the system is turned off and the motor actually descends onto the tire again. Now it's kind of odd because you would think it would be off, but in this case, it actually keeps it there to add tension. Now the purpose of this is that when the bike grows some legs and walks away, somebody tries to steal it. Um, let's see. It has a lot of friction on the motor, but aside from that, it's also taking information from the pedal assist. And let's see. You go a couple of rotations and it should start freaking out. Need more rotations. There we go. Now the alarm starts buzzing. Ugh. And it keeps going and going <laughs> out of those speakers. As far as I know, the only way to turn this thing off is to take the battery out, which requires the key. Let's do that right now. You can tell I'm prepared. There we go. Okay, <laughs> this is actually a good time to talk about the battery. Let's go ahead and go back to, um, let's go ahead and walk back to the little stand so I don't have to hold the bike. It's actually a good time to talk about how far, what did I go, maybe like 20 yards or so. Uh, so at that point, the bike starts buzzing and buzzing and freaking out. And let me tell you, it's not a pleasant sound. Um, I was putting the bike together last night and my daughter was asleep and somehow I tripped the alarm. And so it was buzzing like crazy. <laughs> I was holding my hand over the speaker trying to get it to be quiet. And yeah, so if you're worried about the alarm not working, uh, it does work. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you saw me take the battery out. So that's how that process is done. It has like this little trap door with a key. These, of course, are special keys. Put that right in the back there. Open it up and then opens up the trap door. So this is the battery. This is a 24 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery. So that's one part about the system is that it's putting out a surprising amount of wattage given the smaller battery pack. Now this battery pack, as you saw, fits in about half 
the physical capacity inside of this case because you could totally put in a second battery. So as it stands, this kit is the one that just has the single battery. You can get a second one to stuff in there as an added accessory, or you can buy it that way from the get-go. Uh, but yeah, either slot and you're ready to rock. Let's go ahead and close the key up, put it back in. Oh, okay, it's going out of lock mode right now. All right, there we go. And pull the key out, ready to go. All right, so that is the system. Let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a ride. My favorite part. Okay guys, so here we are taking out the Alizetti 300C on a ride and you guys are going to come along with me. Actually, some time has passed. Uh, I recorded the previous part of the review a little bit earlier and now we're getting into the ride section and I'm glad I did because when I was filming the walk around portion of the review, uh, I hadn't yet tried it out in the rain, but it actually, uh, the overcast turned into showers that night and I got to take it out on the rain and I actually filmed that. And I'll show you that a little bit later on, the actual footage of it performing in the rain. We'll see how it does there. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump on the bike and show you what it does. So just like any other bike, See if I can kind of angle you down just a tiny bit. It's not a whole lot to see, just this you know display area here. Um, but it performs just like a regular bike that you're used to. No surprises there. I mean, most every electric bike does. The fun part is when you take it out from neutral and then you press the plus side of that rocker display up to the top left. And then now you might be able to hear that the motor is or the roller rather is making contact with the wheel kind of sounds like a jetson's car <laughs> when you get it running and that sound is no matter what right now we're in pedal assist level zero and even then just the contact of the roller makes that sound so that's something that you really can't escape that's going to be present so long as you're using the assist level on this in any level um so yeah that's a part of the thing so i would definitely wouldn't call this bike clandestine <laughs> Uh, people are going to hear you coming and maybe you like that kind of thing. Maybe it doesn't bother you. Uh, but yeah, that's the way it is. Uh, so let's go ahead. Right now it has a little tiny bit of assist. I think that's just to kind of compensate for the friction of the motor, the drag of the motor. Um, so it just feels fairly normal with the zero level of assist. Uh, let's go ahead and crank it up. We'll go into level three. Have some, have some more fun. Here we go. And now it feels more like a traditional cadence based pedal assist electric bike. Uh, it senses me pedaling and then it kind of kicks in. Let's go ahead and crank it up all the way to five. Well, we're coming up to the stop. Actually, this is a good important point to uh, kind of focus on is that I cranked it up to level five pedal assist and I kept pedaling. And then it occurred to me, I got to stop at the end of the bridge. The brakes don't have an electric cutoff signal because it's using the stock set of brakes from your bicycle. There is no attachment. So pressing on the brakes is not going to uh, directly stop the motor from powering. It's just going to stop the bike mechanically the way that it always does. Um, but it is a pedal assist system. So of course, when you stop pedaling, it's going to know that you don't need assistance. However, if you pedal a lot and you need to make a sharp stop, then it will power you up for a little bit. So definitely want to make sure that you got a good set of brakes on your bike. Um, if you have some weak brakes, um, then you're going to be fighting those sometimes to try to come to a stop if you're still pedaling. So a few stars have to align in order to make that a, uh, a reasonable concern, but nonetheless, it does exist. Anyways, I'm kind of getting into some of the things that I didn't really want to spend too much time on because one thing about this system, the Alizetti 300C, is that it has really changed my mind as to what a friction drive can be. Right now I got it cranked in level 5 pedal assist. We are rocking at full speed mechanically. Well, let me get to it. There we go. Full speed mechanically. I don't have a speedometer on the bike. Of course, nothing comes with this, so I don't know how fast I'm going. I'm guessing maybe about 20, maybe a tiny bit less. Uh, somewhere around 20 miles an hour is where the mechanical system kind of caps out on this bike. And I feel like I can still put some tension into my legs. So I'm guessing I'm going just below 20 miles an hour um, right now. And it feels like a pedal assist bike. <laughs> it feels like a normal cadence based pedal assist bicycle. And that already has changed my perception as to what a friction drive can be. I've ridden a few systems in the past, uh, just a tiny bit, and they felt really strange. Sometimes they didn't pick up when you wanted to, they were a little bit inconsistent, um, but this one is consistent with pedaling. And that's something I really didn't expect. 
I was kind of coming into this review thinking like, oh boy, uh, this is sure going to be a fun, you know, an interesting uh, kind of system. But it really has surprised me with the viability of it. And I think that's one of the takeaways from this system is that it has a lot of cool features. It has a lot of bells and whistles. You know, it's got the alarm, it's got the lights and the, you know, the turn signals. I actually haven't tested that. It has all these fun things on it. But really the functionality of it actually performing like a pedal assist bike, that's that's a big deal to me. <laughs> Considering that it had to overcome the stigma that a friction drive typically has uh, within the industry. So I think that's already pretty cool. But I would like to show you guys the footage of this thing performing in the rain because it did. So let's go ahead and jump to that. All right guys, so here we are checking out the wet performance of the Alizetti 300C. It's coming down quite a bit. It's both active raining as well as puddles that have been around for a little while. Um, but yeah, I uh, got you guys pointed right down at the roller that's going on to the tire. So hopefully you can kind of hear, it, it might be difficult to see, uh, but hopefully you can hear the difference in the motor when it's having trouble getting some grip on the uh, smooth surface of the tread. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to start off first in regular mode. Uh, I'll have it on pedal assist level three. We'll go around for a little bit. You'll be able to hear the difference. And then I'm going to stop the bike, switch into rain mode, and we'll see how it does there. So let's go. So all in all, it didn't do as bad as I was fearing it would do. It did okay. Um, but uh, you heard that it kind of lost some grip and then the motor was spinning out uh, for a little bit. But uh, I'm going to switch it into uh, rain mode. So I'm going to use the system to put it in a little R on the display. It'll show you the rain mode thing. So we'll see how it does. I'll keep it in pedal assist level three so we can kind of compare. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and try it out. something else it I didn't hear it I certainly didn't feel it but I didn't hear it stop um, I didn't hear the motor the roller rather I didn't hear it spin out with too much energy when I had it on rain mode that's uh <laughs> I was not expecting that I was thinking oh shucks this thing's gonna spin out just a little bit even on the straightaway I had it cranked to level 5 pedal assist and it didn't spin out for the last I don't know like 20 yards or so so yeah that's it does work in the rain fancy that <laughs> All right, guys, so hopefully that kind of gets the message across. I was quite surprised that the system performed at all in the rain. You know, the friction drives, yeah, they're, not, they're not the best thing in the world as far as electric bike performance goes. Um, but in the rain, that's been kind of like the Achilles heel, that when the moisture gets in there, they just don't work. And I saw that with this system, and hopefully you saw that too, or hopefully it came across in the footage, that when you're riding in the rain in a normal friction drive mode, then it spins out you know that moisture on contact with the rubber and the roller of the tire and all that stuff it just doesn't compute um, but i don't know what they did to program it for rain mode but it did keep tension it did keep performing and helping the whole time and that was that was phenomenal i do want to say i mean it's this has like i said it has changed my perception of what a friction drive can be and i want to say that a friction drive is a viable option and that's something I wouldn't have told you last week. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. Compared to a typical electric bicycle, the friction drive does has, have its differences, the Alizetti 300C in particular. This, this system does not include a throttle, so therefore it is a class one, or it turns your bicycle into a class one electric bike. 
Now with that, um, it is legal. It benefits from the most legal protections uh, depending on where you are. Um, here in the Salt Lake Valley, um, it, it has lots of legal protections. You can take it off road if you wanted to, but the system, the friction drive systems don't work all that well with a knobbier uh, tire. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Um, anyways, as far as how the feeling is, um, this does have a cadence-based system, so it doesn't pick up immediately. It's not like a torque-based system, especially one of the advanced torque-based systems like on the name brand mid-drives. So it takes a second um, to kick in. It's not right away. So if you're looking for a low impact kind of riding, if you wanted to ride without having to press too hard, then this system would be okay if you keep it in a low mechanical gear because you can gear yourself all the way down like this and rotate the pedals as a formality because it's really not putting any tension onto the drivetrain, but it is exciting the, uh, the pedal assist. So if you wanted to, you could gear it all the way down and pedal in this manner to keep it like a lightweight, or sorry, low impact kind of uh, tension on the chain. Um, but there might be other systems that could do that. You know, a cadence based system is not a, a pricey thing. And this thing is only getting the kind of information from one pedal stroke, meaning that there's a magnet on the pedal. I mean, you saw it for the run around or the walk around. There is a magnet on the pedal and there is a magnet on the bike. And it's only counting that one thing. A lot of other bikes have 12 magnets or possibly eight in some cases, or maybe more, I don't know. I usually hear 12 or eight uh, being thrown out there. So I wouldn't really, I wouldn't call the system responsive. I would say it's more for a commuting aspect, um, especially with longer jaunts. Cause right now I'm going for kind of a long, a long uh, ride back to my house. So I'm going for a longer stretch on this road. It's maybe like half a mile or so long. And that's a perfect opportunity to really get into the groove of the system. So um, the friction drive doesn't really have that immediacy of it, but it does kind of smooth into it, or it does, you know, it does lend to a smooth riding once you get some momentum. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the Ali Zeti 300C with me. It really has been quite surprising. Uh, so if you want to compare this with a bunch of other electric bicycles, most of them, well, pretty much almost all of them, 95% of them, 98. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to compare this with electric bicycles that we have on our website, go to electricbikereview.com. While you're there, you can see the specifications for this bike, including some measurements that I took with some important information, photographs, and compare that with all the other electric bikes that we've done over the years on electricbikereview.com. You can also go there if you'd like to participate in the forum and be active in the community, ask a question, hang out, that kind of thing. So thanks for watching guys, ride safe.